Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy, Seth, so here's a video here today. We're a brand new Photoshop slash Illustrator video on how to try to create your own nice logo, as well as some stream screens for yourself, as well as panels, and uh, hopefully give you guys the entire package in a nice quick 15 or so minute video. So, I mean, with that being said, if you guys learned something in this video, hopefully you guys leave a like, all that good stuff, and you guys are new to my channel, and you guys like my stuff, I mean, like this video, and then possibly maybe accidentally click on my channel, and then look, and then be like, holy crap, this guy's cool, and then subscribe. That's also a thing. But, with that being said, we're Start, off, uh, start ourselves off inside Illustrator, then move on into Photoshop, and uh, hopefully you guys learn something, you guys get yourselves looking really good the next time you press the go live button, and uh, yeah, that's it, enjoy. Alright guys, so with logo design, especially for people who have never actually done it before, sometimes the best route for beginners to actually take is using a pre-existing idea for your actual logo, so a font. When looking for a font that best fits your vibe, you can search for places like defont.com, where on the top of the page you can see multiple different categories to easily search through. When selected on a category, you guys can actually see in the preview settings a place to actually type in your word or letter of choice to actually see what it looks like. Then you simply have the luxury to scroll through till you find a font that best fits your vibe. Also, don't forget about sites like Behance.net, Fontspace, and possibly my playlist of best free fonts that I'm going to shamelessly plug that you guys actually click on in the top right. Honestly, you're in charge here, so you don't have to settle. Just try to search through all the actual sites themselves, which is why one of the hardest people to actually design for is honestly yourself. Now, let's say you find your favorite font and you're ready to get started inside Illustrator. You basically want to write out your word or letter. In my case, I'm going to use the letter S and the font that I'm using is called Thetis. So the cool thing about Illustrator and using a font as a logo is that we can actually select the letter or word and go to Object, Expand, and then press OK. Now, if we were using the Direct Selection tool, which is A on your keyboard for the shortcut, you can select individual pen tool anchors that make up the actual letter. So you can move, stretch, shrink, or customize the font any way you guys actually see fit. Sometimes what I actually enjoy doing is making slices and intersecting points of a letter, and basically having that be the fun, cool, custom element that I end up adding. Overall, there isn't much that you can go wrong here as a beginner. Honestly, whatever looks cool just looks cool to you, and that's all that really matters, right? Now, once you're done customizing a letter, you can actually add a few variations to see what ideas actually look good to you as well. So one variation being a flat color idea that most likely you were already playing with already, However, you can also open up your stroke table in Windows Stroke, then select your letter and make sure you guys choose the outside path option and start adding more weight to your stroke. You can add just enough for it to look like a simply added stroke around your letter, or you can take it a bit further and make the stroke a standout point in the design and really bump up the weight. Personally, in my case with this font here, a nice little boxy font, I think it looks super, super dope. Again, you cannot really go wrong here. However, with a simple font, you can see you can actually land yourself in a spot where you're actually super happy with to actually moving into Photoshop and actually start designing your assets. All right, homies, so let's get this thing going right here, right now, inside Photoshop. And basically, before we hop in and actually design something, I want to quickly show you guys how I came my colors that I'm using today's video. So, when you're picking out your colors yourself, you're like, I don't know what to do. All you have to do is pick your favorite color. Mine is not purple, but just for the sake of it, right? You pick your favorite color, which happens to be the main color in this case right here. So I chose purple. And then basically your dark color, which ends going to be, which, excuse me, is going to end up being your background color is basically your main color, but darker, you know, right? So realistically, when I <clears throat> chose my purple, right, I can click over here and just take this and go, yo, I want the purple. That's my main color. And I'm going to take this further down. That's my dark color. And I'm good to move forward. And that's exactly how you guys would get your dark and your main color. So really quickly, just in case that wasn't clear enough, let's say, yo, I want red to be my main color. We're going to ahead and say, yo, quick, fill that in. Then we'll just use a quick little color overlay to show you guys really quickly, right? We'll go, yo, basically red is the color I want for my main. We're going to take this, drag this further down and be like, hey, this is the dark color I want to use. And there you guys go. You guys got your own color scheme going with, you know, another secondary color that can work for red or those can just be your colors itself. But realistically, your secondary color isn't really necessary in, in that case because it's honestly realistically only about your main and your dark color and then white being a fill color that can be used for like if you wanted to add some cool elements or like brush stocks or whatever like paint splatters things like that that's what you can use white for and all that kind of stuff will make as a really cohesive look and hopefully you don't have to really run into too many troubles with color um so with that being said the actual dimension that we're going to be using is file new right it's going to be 1920 by 1080 300 resolution press ok now I'm gonna do for myself here is be like, yo, I need all this to be over here as well. And what that was really quickly, just in case you're wondering, this is called LightShot. Um, you can download it, it's like a print screen program. So 
Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drag in my logo from Illustrator into Photoshop because I chose the one that has this really cool stroke look, right? I thought it looked dope and that's what I'm gonna end up doing. So, right, like I said before, the background color is gonna be the dark color. So I'm gonna choose my foreground color to be this purple right here, right? Then I'm gonna select my background. I'm gonna press Alt and then Backspace and that'll basically quick fill in my foreground color, Alt and Backspace. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a new layer right above my uh, background. We're gonna take this color, we're gonna click on this background one, one more time to get the same color, right? We're gonna drag this up just a little bit, not up to our secondary color, but just basically move it kind of up into the left, right? Press okay. Now when you have this color, whatever color it ends up being for you, by the way, right? You click on it once, just like so. We're gonna lower the fill down just a little bit, give ourselves a nice simple little glow just to make it look, you know, a little spicy and a little more depth, I guess, right? Now, with our logo already dragged in, we're gonna take this and our logo color that you guys made in Illustrator will be your main color. So, color overlay, click on this purple right here, and this is the main color that I wanna choose, right? Make this nice and big. We're basically gonna have our logo be what texturizes our entire background and our entire revamp, okay? So with that being said here, we're looking pretty solid right there. I'm gonna actually just make this red, move it up here, take that away for a second, okay? Right, you can put it on a slant, you, can, you don't have to put it on a slant, you can make it bigger, smaller, but I don't think, I think honestly bigger in this case will be better um, for you guys to actually move forward with. Now, when you guys have this, I'm gonna make a duplicate by holding Alt, clicking on it, and dragging below. That will actually make a duplicate for myself. Now, I do have this being the same color, I want this to be black again, so I'm gonna take off the color overlay. Now, I'm gonna take this and rotate it, just like so. I can make it even more bigger if I wanted to. Right, something like this where you're kind of seeing this really cool kind of hex, or not hex, but really cool crossing the colors kind of thing. But we're not going to keep it pure black. We're going to take the opacity of this black and lower it further down. And now this gives myself a really good look of kind of like you have your background color, you have your mid-ground kind of fun texturized color. Now we have our main color as well. And all that's just being used is the dark and main colors that we chose at the beginning, right? So we're looking good. Cool. So. This is where you guys can go and end up adding in the words offline, right? We're gonna put the words offline. The font that I'm, I'm gonna choose for this video, let's just say like, uh, let's do the one, sure, we'll do this one. Um, it's fun, it's weird. I'm gonna take the VA spacing down. Also, if you guys don't have this characters table, it's under a Windows character, just like so. And you'll see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the word offline nice and big right there. Right, I'm gonna put this back in here for a second. Right, then I'm gonna take this, duplicate it by holding Alt and dragging it up, just like so, holding Alt and dragging will make duplicates. I'm gonna change this word to be stream, of course. Now, you can make it two fonts, you can stack it like that. It's all, of course, at this point, a theme that you're working with, but, you know, I'm kinda just, you know, saying whatever, but usually what I like to do is for my secondary font color or my subtext color, or so my subtext font, I like to choose a really cool, clean font, um, no matter what. Right, so I'm gonna use Grifter for this. Now what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna basically shrink it down with Control T, take the corner, shrink it down, right? Pretty small, right? So right now, all we're gonna be worrying about for the word itself is, hey, we're offline, come again next time, sorry, right? So I'm gonna take the VA spacing, and I'm gonna hold Shift and just put that up. That'll basically put spaces in between each letter, right, you can see what's happening here. In between each letter, it just makes it look a little more cooler, a little more spaced out, um, right? I'm gonna take this, take my secondary color, that will be right there. Now, this is also where you guys can just say, yo, I wanna put in, you know, maybe like my social links. This could be your Twitter. Down here, you can put the icon in there as well. It'd be Twitter. I wouldn't do blue if I'm honest. Probably keep it white. Put your Twitter, your Instagram, your TikTok, or whatever you guys are end up like working with. And that can be also down there as well. And there's your offline screen. Super, super simple. And it's actually how cool you could just end up using what you made in like hopefully 10 or so minutes in this illustrator with a logo and the font end up creating and making this really simple offline screen, right? Looks clean, it's super, super dope. And the way you guys would save it, by the way, is file and you wanna do uh, export, save for web, and you wanna save it as a PNG 24 and making sure all these boxes right here are checked, not this one, and then of course convert to sRGB and you guys press save and you're good to go. Now, intermission screens. Watch how crazy this is gonna be for you guys, right? I'm gonna take all this away for a second we're gonna hide it, right? Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna press Control, Alt, or Control, Shift, and N. That'll make a new layer. All you have to do is press right here, make a new layer, okay? 
I'm gonna use the rectangle marquee tool just to quickly select the entire thing and press alt backspace to quick fill whatever color is in there. Basically you want a layer with a full solid color on it just like so, right? Then I'm gonna take this layer and convert it to a smart object for reasons, right? Control T to free transform. Then this box right here that I'm gonna shrink down is basically my camera box. Just like that, right? Usually you would see a basically 1920 by 1080 ratio um, as your camera ratio. So of course, as you can do here, right? Then you can go back and say, yo, offline and stream. This is my, these are my two main fonts that I use, right? The, this one and this one. So I'm gonna take this and say intermission, shrink it down obviously. And this will go right up here. The word stream will go right over here as well. Lower this down a bit and then boom, I got myself a start of a stream intermission. Now, if you move your box and stream animation text a little bit to the left, on the right hand side over here, right, you can make another box, just like so. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit so the box is more space, right? Just like this. Now, I won't make it this color. This will be, be an actual color I'm gonna use, which will be this dark purple, right, the background color. And then this box over here on your right hand side can be your chat box. And that's, of course, you can make this whatever color you guys wish to, but realistically, I think it looks pretty good as your background color because um, it just works really well. This is not going to be here. Don't worry about it. But right here, this is where you can also add your other socials like Twitter, Twitch, and whatever that are not Twitter, what Twitch, whatever you're streaming on, right? But this is where you can add your other socials, right? You can also add recent follower, right? Let's just say if this said recent follower, right? What you guys can do to make a quick little box for yourself. Don't mind the spelling. You can... Anyway, control, make a new layer, right? Or not control, but just make a new layer. Then use your nice little box over here. Don't worry. I know it's spelled wrong. Don't say anything in the comments. Uh, and then you can just basically make yourself a nice simple box just like so. And then just to make it, you know, look pretty cool, maybe use the background color. Then you take a nice brush, like a soft brush, basically means zero hardness. And you can take it and kind of fill in your box not completely, but give it this nice, cool kind of cascading shadow feel that, of course, however many things you want to end up putting, you can make that box just really, really simple, right? So, of course, if this actually did say what I wanted to say, follower, right? I would put the word recent up the top, just like so, with that other font that we chose before, grifter, and also maybe even use that color again, that blue. I don't have the same exact one, but I'll just use a random blue for now. Um, okay, there we go. Random blue, please come forth, right? And then I'll go ahead and shrink this down a little further. And then you have yourself a nice little recent follower box. Of course, if you might have your socials here, you can, but if I'm honest, people are kind of used to using your uh, socials for um, like scrolling down your Twitch and whatnot. So I really wanna really do it. But for the most part, you guys just move this over again. And of course it's gonna say recent subscriber or whatever. And you have your little box there with the name that you guys need. And then you guys write yourself your admission screen. Now, to actually save your intermission screen, this big box here, like I said before, we're not gonna use this box. We're gonna take this, move this up, just like so, all the way on the top of your actual um, design, right? Then with this layers, all these layers here, we wanna group them together. So Control G, um, you can't do it with a lock layer, it's gonna unlock this layer. Click on this layer, hold Shift, click on the background layer, Control G to group together, then Control J to make a duplicate, and then Control E to merge it all together. Now we have ourselves a nice little copy, but with this, you want to hold control on this, that, you know, layer here, that camera layer. You can hide it now. And all you have to do is click on this layer again and press delete on your keyboard. And now you have a transparent background. So when you put it on OBS, you basically put your image and your camera goes below it and you can just kind of fixate it wherever you need to fixate it. But of course, the way you save it is the same exact way from before export. And of course, save for web, you use not JPEG, but PNG 24, make sure transparency is on. And there's your intermission screen. It's kind of simple. It's super, super simple. I wouldn't say like it's simple to do graphic design, but I'm just saying in this case that we're using in today's example, it's pretty easy. Hopefully it's super, super simple. And you guys would just basically take this same exact idea with your Twitch panels, which will be 650 by, oops, 650 by 150 is what I'm gonna end up putting in, 650 and then 150, 300 resolution. And of course, this is like the kind of base size that I end up using for myself. You can make them skinnier by pressing C on your keyboard, make it skinnier, not that skinny, but or make it bigger if you guys need to. But realistically, it's a pretty good size here. And then you just do the same exact thing you did over here, right? For your animation screen, just take those background elements. Even if you want to just take the background elements, drag them in here. And then that'll be basically your set kind of example to end up putting, you know, the Twitch and then follow my Twitter idea here. Let's just do this for yourself, just for an example of a 
of how to do it. Honestly, I'm pretty sure you guys get it at this point, but just for the, what I'm saying is you could just use the same exact background as before and you guys just drag that in here and you can put, you know, follow my Twitter and of course the Twitter icon to the left. And then that is how you basically make your really quick Twitter, Twitch, whatever panels um, for your stream. So that is it. That is actually how you guys end up creating your really quick and awesome, clean, simple, all the, all the words, Twitch revamp um, or YouTube revamp, whatever you guys are on. But hey, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys end up learning something. Hope you guys make some really cool and creative stuff, fun stuff. If you want to tweet at me for any help and stuff like that, it's at SSOHQ. Um, and if you guys are new to the stream, or not the stream, excuse me, new to the videos, also I stream too, but if you guys are new to the videos, please sure to just, uh, click the subscribe button that's like wh wherever, right? I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. If you guys, of course, learn something as well, like the video, and uh, that's it. Talk to you guys later. So HQ out. You have to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking proud, guys. Later. Much love. And uh, no happy Sight shit, art over hype shit, need a sound bite.